Hey everybody, this is More Fanime. I am your fan of More Anime, and today I will be discussing, I will be reviewing the One Piece TV special from 2015, Adventure on Nebulandia. Um, and I got to say, off the bat, this TV special, quote unquote, this hour and 45 minute TV special was absolutely, positively fan freaking tastic. Like, it blew me away. I actually went into this with zero expectations, actually less than zero expectations, because going into it, I knew the one of the main characters of this special was Foxy and the Foxy Pirates, and I assumed that they were the main villains of this special, and I assumed it was basically going to be the Davy Back fight too, but I was wrong. There are a lot of twists and turns throughout this entire special. This could legitimately be a movie. I would legitimately not be um, disappointed if I went and paid and watched this in theaters. That's how good this special was. I had such a good time, people. And I, I was so excited I had to come tell you about my good time. Because I feel like people are sleeping on the adventure of Nebulandia. I feel like nobody in the comments have ever told me to watch this. It is set around right after Fishman Island. It's not canon, but it's an anime only little TV special thing that came out. And damn, was it good. Like, it was G8 level good. Like, the G8 filler arc that's very, very good that I really, really like as well as most of the fandom. If you enjoy that, you will enjoy this. I'm telling you that right here, right now. Because it was that good. Um, wow, I don't even know where to start. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that wants to go watch this or haven't watched this. Because, damn was this good. I mean, really, really good. Um, it, it's basically very simple. The movie kicks off with a, a scene of Luffy being shot. And, and we're like, what's happening? Luffy's dying. Oh my God. And then it cuts away uh, and we, we start the movie proper. So it was like, okay, so we're leading up to this point where Luffy got shot. Which I almost feel like they didn't need to do because obviously we know Luffy's not going to die in a TV special. Maybe they should have just led straight into the story. So the Straw Hat Pirates are sailing around along the New World. They see an island. They see a bunch of shipwrecked women. And of course Sanji wants to save them. And Luffy's always for an adventure. The crew go begrudgingly save these women that turn out to actually be the foxy pirates in disguise and you know it's been a while since we've seen them i mean luffy doesn't even recognize foxy at first which is pretty funny but he's done that gag before where he doesn't recognize certain characters that weren't very impactful in his life and eventually he does remember dave the davy back fight they do remember certain parts of it i personally really enjoyed the foxy pirate arc um, I know a lot of people didn't, and they probably were anime-only types, because I did skip the filler portions in the anime, because I was told it was just god-awful, and it just stretches it out for no reason. But the manga version of the, the Davy Back fights was fantastic. It was hilarious. There was some action-packed moments with Zoro and Sanji teaming up and Luffy putting an afro on and fighting Foxy and arguably a more intense fight than him versus Anel. And I just gotta say I enjoyed the Foxy arc. And if you enjoyed the Foxy arc, you will enjoy this movie because it is a very Foxy-centric movie. He is a proper character in this movie. He is a, he, they almost redeem him in a lot of ways, which is shocking. Like I went into this movie thinking, okay, it's going to be funny. 
They're going to have a couple crazy games. It's going to be kind of cool to see Brooke and Frankie involved in the debut back fight. But that's about it. That's how I went into this movie. Turns out Foxy has um, collected some new members of his crew, some former Marines, quote unquote, that have joined his crew. One of them is a, um, a shipwright like Frankie, who even acknowledges Frankie's abilities as a shipwright. And another one is a um, strategist from the Navy named Komei. Dojaku is the shipwright. And Komei is obviously a little creepy. He, he's a little goofy at first. And I really didn't know that they were tricking us from the beginning. Turns out they were always part of the Navy. They were tricking, they were using the Foxy Pirates to trap the, the, uh, straw hat pirates and i was a little shocked like i was like what is happening like i knew that they did that whole luffy getting shot at the beginning and i i don't know why i didn't put two and two together that the the navy was highly involved in this story turns out this guy was tricking foxy and using foxy as you know as a uh, a rouge so that Luffy would drop his guard and the crew would drop his guard because they probably assumed that, that the Foxy Pirates can't be that big of a deal of a problem at this point. Like, really, even if Luffy and the crew lost the Davy back fight, do you really think that any of his members would go join the Foxy Pirates? Zoro would be like, no, I quit. I'm going to go rejoin the Luffy Pirate, the uh, Straw Hat Pirates. Fuck off. But because Komei and Dojaku were actually secretly still a part of the Marines, they trick them. They have an eating contest in the very first Davy Vac fight uh, competition, which was really cool. It was really cool seeing the Davy Vac fight like... Per, uh, like almost like a circus thing going around. Everybody's having a good time, having food and drinks. Zoro's just getting drunk. I was like, "Whoa, this is a party! Awesome, sweet." I was, I really put this movie, this uh, special on as like a oh, on a whim. I was just bored, and I, I wanted to watch something One Piece that I haven't seen before. So I put this on. I have the Funimation app. So maybe it did affect my score on this movie because I didn't have to technically quote unquote pay for this because it is on the Funimation app. If you have the Funimation app and you haven't seen this special, please stop this video and go watch it because it's fan freaking tastic. Honestly, before I get too deep into this movie, it's a seven out of 10 easy. It, it, it had a few small things that I think could have put it up even higher. Um, just a few, just little things that I think that I would have preferred, but Luffy, Brooke and Sanji have to enter this eating competition along with two, three members of the Foxy Pirates. It was three on three, uh, Porche and Hamburg along with Dojaku, the, the secret Marine, um, shipwright versus Luffy, Brooke, and Sanji. Brooke ends up being disqualified because he is a skeleton man who doesn't technically have a stomach, and they sub in Zoro, which is kind of suspicious. Turns out this dude, Komei, has had a plan all along. He's a total strategist from the get-go. Even They did admit that he was a strategist from the Marines, and he had a fucking baller plan. He had a plan to eliminate Luffy's two strongest members of his crew, his right and left hand man, Sanji and Zoro. They eat these mushrooms. They completely collapse. Luffy also eats the mushrooms too. And so do two members of the Foxy Pirates, which tricked me because I was like, well, why would they poison their own men? So obviously they can't be poisonous. Turns out this guy doesn't give a shit. Komei doesn't give a shit about the Foxy Pirates. They were always just going to be stooges for his big plan. He ends up activating some cage, the stage they, they were eating these mushrooms on, this cage comes down and captures uh, Porsche, Hamburg, Zoro, Sanji, and Luffy. They are poisoned by these mushrooms, which aren't technically poisonous. They, they make you lose the ability, the want to fight back, basically. 
They make you weak and scared. They basically give you anxiety is what I got from it. They're just, they don't want anything. Luffy even said after eating the mushroom, I don't want to eat any more food. I'm, I'm just, I'm not feeling good. Like that shocked me. Luffy should never not want to eat food. That's what I'm going to say right here, right now, people. That was shocking. Um, then he purposely, Kome and Dojaku purposely reveal the antidote, which is another mushroom, and Nico Robin uses her abilities, her hand flower fruit abilities, to grab the the uh, the antidote, passes it to Luffy. Luffy gets the antidote, breaks out of this prison, which is not made of sea sea, sea stone prison, ah, sea stone prism, whatever. The, the bars were not made of that. He was able to break out. And I was like, what? Why wouldn't you just make the bars sea stone? Turns out, Kome wanted Luffy to escape. He wanted that to happen. Everything leading up to the finish of this movie is part of Kome's plan, which I absolutely adore. He ends up capturing Sanji, Zoro, and two members of the Foxy Pirates. He betrays Foxy. Foxy's crushed. Foxy and Luffy end up teaming up for a majority of this movie. They team up along with, uh, of course, Nami and Frankie and Usopp. Chopper and Brooke go look for the antidote, which is part of Komei's plan. He wanted the crew to split up, so he knew that they would go look for the antidote. He wanted Luffy to escape so they could go look for the antidote so he can capture more members of his crew while Luffy isn't around. He wanted to eliminate them one after another, and that shit blew me away. I was like, what? This guy is thinking 12 steps ahead of Luffy right now, which isn't, isn't a hard thing to do with Luffy. Luffy usually punches his way out of hard situations, but this is one of those times where Luffy can't. Like, I love villains. I love when somebody's able to beat somebody with their mind and not physically beat them. At no point do you feel like Komei or Dojaku could beat Luffy in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Could even beat Sanji or Zoro in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And they know that, which I love. They knew that they couldn't beat these guys, so they eliminated the two that weren't Devil Fruit users, Sanji and Zoro, the two strongest uh, people on Luffy's crew that aren't Luffy. Take them out of the equation, which also makes room for Frankie, Usopp, Chopper, Brooke, Nami, and Nico Robin to have the spotlight. Usually in these movies, in these specials, the Straw Hat crew uh, doesn't get a lot of time to do big things. I, I don't know how to word it. Uh, what I mean is Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy usually get the spotlight. Uh, by eliminating Zoro and Sanji early on, you give room for Nico Robin, for Frankie, for Usopp, for Chopper, for Brooke to do awesome things, which we all want to see. These, that's what these specials should be for. It should be for developing characters that don't normally get that time, which got me so hyped. The minute Zoro and Sanji were taken captive, captive I was like, oh shit. They're doing what I've been saying for years. They sh they're giving these other side characters more time in these specials. I was so pumped. I was so excited to see what they're going to do. I was actually really thinking that Dojaku and Frankie, since Dojaku is a shipwright and he even acknowledged Frankie, I was like, if Dojaku and Frankie fight at the end in an epic battle reminiscent of the P Senior Pink fight, I will lose my fucking mind and this will be a 10 out of 10. Turns out Dojaku and Frankie do not have a one-on-one -on -one badass fight and it does make me sad and is one of the things that is a negative on this special. It's not necessary, but I really wanted to see the two shipwrights go at it in a battle. A battle that needed to happen. It doesn't happen. Spoilers. I'm sorry. Unless I went to the bathroom and missed it, it doesn't happen. Um, but it was something I was hoping for because it was like, okay, so there's the shipwright and he's acknowledging Frankie as another shipwright and it's not happening. So, um, there's also another character named Kansho, who's part of the Foxy crew, who also recently joined, separate from 
Kome and Dojaku, and he is a sniper, and he's actually a big fan of Usopp. And I was so pumped for that. I was like, cool, Usopp has a fan who knows that he's a really good sniper. I mean, it's been two years. He's kind of famous. What's going on here? He knows that he's also Sniper King. I mean, it's kind of obvious. But Kancho actually turns out to be a double agent at the very end. Spoilers. Which blew me away. And he actually turns out to be the guy who shoots Luffy with that bullet, which I assume is made of sea prism stone. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But it blew me away because I didn't expect Kancho, who was kind of just like a goofy character who was part of Foxy Pirate's crew, to also be a Marine. Kome was thinking 12 steps ahead. Um, he seemingly captures Brooke and Chopper, who are looking for the cure. Turns out that they tricked them and actually didn't get captured. And actually, Brooke and Chopper get to make the save at the very end, which I was super pumped for because I thought that they might write Chopper and Brooke out of this special and be like, okay, they're just going to be off looking for the cure and we'll see them at the very end and they're not going to do anything special. Turns out they actually make the ultimate save at the end. They bring the cure to Sanji and Zoro. Hell yes. I was super excited for Brooke and Chopper in that moment. Uh, Frankie and Nam, uh, and Nico Robin gets a major moment where she actually wraps her arms around one of these towers that the Marines have, and she actually gets attacked by this plant that also affects people like C. Prism Stone that, uh, that uh, neutralizes Devil Fruit users. Turns out this Kome guy knew that this island was the perfect island to take out Devil Fruit users. It was another reason why he wanted to take out Sanji and Zoro. They were the only two that could probably take him down, even though he had these Devil Fruit using um, uh, weapons on this island. Like, this island was built to fuck up Devil Fruit users, and I thought that was super dope. Uh, Nico Robin gets captured. Brooke and, Fra uh, and Chopper are seemingly captured. Frankie gets captured trying to save Usopp from being electrocuted, which was insane. Frankie was being a boss there. L L L Luffy's basically by himself. It's like Luffy and Foxy and uh, Kansho, who turns out to be a double agent for the Marines, which was shocking as all hell. Luffy gets shot by Kansho, like I mentioned before, but turns out that Luffy had this little uh, foxy trinket, which was a face of foxy, like a metal face of foxy, that like when you press it, it, it does his little laugh. It blocked the bullet, luckily enough for Luffy. Luckily, Luffy is full of luck, if you know what I mean. Luffy actually ends up in a decent battle with Komei. Komei, a devil fruit, not a devil fruit user, a hockey user. I did not expect that. And they have a decent battle. I would say the only negative in this special is there wasn't major fights. It was really more about the story, really more about this Komei villain who was totally unlikable in a lot of ways. Like the perfect villain for this movie. I had no, he has no redeeming qualities. He is a sleaze ball. But Damn, is he good at strategic uh, warfare, which he had with the Straw Hat crew, who are really not good at that. Um, I mean, the only reason Luffy was able to win was because he had luck on his side. Like, if he didn't get lucky, like if Brook and Chopper did get captured, if Luffy did get shot, he might have went down. I love the fact that a character who isn't necessarily physically strong was able to take down some of the strongest pirates in the world. I love when they're able to do that. I love when anime is able to have OP characters like Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, and they were able to use mushrooms, poisonous mushrooms, to take them down temporarily. He was using strategy to take down the Straw Hats one at a time. It was a chess game, a 4D chess game that he was playing. He planned ahead. He was Batman. He was planning ahead one at a time. And Luffy was losing. It was actually getting pretty dark at the very end. 
Luffy ends up winning with his burning red hawk. Uh, Sanji and Zoro get cured by Chopper, and they kick some marine ass. I would say my only issue is I feel like Frankie. Frankie deserved a major one-on-one -on -one fight with Dojaku, which, if it happened, it happened when I went to the bathroom, and it was very short. I don't believe it happened. Please comment down below and tell me I'm right there. Pretty sure that did not happen. And I honestly feel Kansho should have had a sniper battle with Usopp. Like, I feel like normally these movies slash specials are based around Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy. And they normally have the major fights at the very end. This should have been Usopp and Frankie's moment to shine. Kansho versus Usopp in a sniper battle and Dojaku versus Frankie in a ship right battle. It should have happened and I'm disappointed that it didn't. And that's why this doesn't get any higher than a 7. At the most, this is a 7 out of 10. This is a rewatchable special that if you ever just want to have a good time with the Straw Hat crew, you want to dive in with the Straw Hat crew into the new world. You want to see uh, the Foxy Pirates again and have a good time. They made Foxy redeemable. He wanted to save his crew. Porsche and Camberg were his first two members of his crew, he mentions. And he says to Luffy, like, I need to save them. They're my, they're my crewmates. And Luffy mentions, like, I need to save Sanji and Zoro because I can't become King of the Pirates without my crew by my side, which was such a touching moment. I love that part of this movie, uh, special, whatever you want to call it. It was really good. This was basically a movie. I would have paid good money to see it because it was that good. The ending was decent. The fights were okay. That was the only thing. The fights were okay. And the fights were even, weren't even were even that important. The fights in One Piece aren't necessarily the reason to watch One Piece. It's the story. It's the character development. It's the plot. I feel like even uh, Foxy and Luffy both got a little bit of character development in this, this non-canon special. Like, you felt like Luffy learned, hey, Maybe you got to think a little ahead of your movements here and not just go head first into battle. Even though it won't affect the actual future plot, I felt that. This was a good special. I had a really good time. The twists and turns. Kansho in ending up being a double-double agent blew me away. Komei, who, like I said, is an unlikable character. You will not like him, but you will respect his strategic ability. And I did... Very much. I, I'm going to tell you right here, right now, before I end this video, how I would make this vi this movie, this special, a 10 out of 10. I would replace Komei and Dojaku with Jonathan and um, Condi Doriano from uh, the G8 special filler arc that was absolutely fantastic. If you know what I'm talking about, comment down below and tell me how much you love the G8 filler arc because if could you imagine Jonathan in replacement for Komei the two were strategic characters the two strategic vice admirals pretty much Komei was a blend of if you took if you took Jonathan and you took Condi Doriano and blended them up you would have Komei he kind of looks like Condi Doriano but he has the mind the mindset that Jonathan has, the, the strategic ability to think far ahead of his opponent. And could you imagine Jonathan, a character who was able to best Luffy here and there with a little bit of strategery without any time to plan it out, really? Imagine Jonathan with multiple weeks to plan his revenge. Even though Jonathan wasn't necess necessarily a villain, he was a great character for Luffy to face. And I would love to see him again, even though he's a non-canon character. He would be the perfect character to bring into one of these TV specials or movies. I would have been so hyped if he was the main uh, antagonist in this movie special. I really think that if you replace Con Komei with Jonathan and find a way to also incorporate Condi Doriano since the, fan the fandom really like him, you could have had such a 10 out of 10 home run. But yeah, 
So this is my review of the adventure of Nebulandia. And believe me, I left out a lot of important fun details. I, I mean, there's a lot of amazing, uh, hilarious, touching, uh, action-packed moments in this special that I didn't mention. And you gotta check it out. There's a few minor things that bugged me about it. Like the, the models for the... The, the, the Navy characters were like, there were three different models and they made multiples of them, which means nothing to me, really. Uh, you get to see Sanji and Zoro kick ass at the very end, but it was really cool to see them sidelined for the first time. Usually, Nami and, and Chopper are sidelined, but this time, it was Sanji and Zoro. What a twist! You get to see Foxy and Luffy work together to beat the main villain, which was dope. Slow, slow beam plus Red Hawk. Oh, shiz. You get to see Foxy kind of become a good guy for a little while. He was never necessarily a bad guy, but damn, it was cool to see him work together with Luffy. And normally, I'm not necessarily a big fan of Foxy, the character. I'm a big fan of his arc. I think his arc was hilarious and a fun time, but I... I I didn't expect to like Foxy as much as I did in this arc, or this special. If you haven't seen this almost two hour special, please, please go watch it. I know I spoiled the shit out of it in this, but I'm telling you, you ha will have a grand time. And I know I'm hyping it up, so maybe the best way to watch it is not to get hyped up about it, since I wasn't hyped up about it, and that was the reason it blew me away. But damn. Was this a fun ass time? Please, if you could take a moment and subscribe to the More Fanime channel, it would help me out oh so much. I am on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'll talk to you later.